Uh, welcome back, guys. So I am going to talk about the same example, Mr. Brown versus Mr. Green, but this time I'm going to talk about the outcomes and the uh, preferences. All right. So here, um, one trick that we you know keep doing is well, instead of referring to Mr. Brown, Mr. Green, we usually, if there are two players, name or the number of the players, number one and, and number two, all right? And for the actions, we don't really write, you know, long action names like hedge fund or, you know, open a restaurant in Richmond Hill. So instead, we call them actions A, B, C, D, whatever. So here, this is exactly what I'm going to do. So remember, we have Mr. Brown and Mr. Green. So I'm going to call Mr. Brown as player one. All right, so this belongs to player one, therefore. So player one's decision, sorry, decision note. So this is decision note for player two, therefore, Mr. Green, remember. So this is the hedge fund. So I'm gonna call it H, all right? So whenever I hear H, like I sort of refer to hedge fund. And this one is like opening a restaurant, all right? So any letter you like, so it's O. Very good. So if here, meaning if the, if, if the uh, player one decides the hedge fund investment, player two, remember, opens a restaurant in Richmond Hill versus Toronto downtown. So downtown is D and the Richmond Hill is R. And then the end of the game. Okay. Here, however, when the player one decides the uh, opening a restaurant, player one, I mean Mr. Brown, again makes a decision. Uh, to open a restaurant in downtown or Richmond Hill. And then remember, I had an info set for who? For player two. So instead of putting two here, two here, I just put two uh, just, you know, next to the dots so that I, I know that this information set belongs to the second player. And again, the second player is choosing action D and R. So one thing that you should be very careful, so here, opening a restaurant in downtown refers to D. So therefore, whenever you have opened a restaurant in downtown, you have to use the same letter, okay? All of a sudden, you cannot put letter E here or S here, for example, because E and S refers to, you know, theoretically, a different actions. So be careful about it. So for that reason, I have D's, D's and R's everywhere, except, you know, these two points. Uh, these two branches, I'm sorry. All right, so these are the decision notes, okay? And so I'm going to assume the following in terms of preferences, I, which I sort of mentioned, right? Everybody prefers, I mean, uh, opening a restaurant uh, 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 downtown. Uh, downtown is definitely preferred to, all right? So at least as good as uh, uh, opening a restaurant in Richmond Hill, all right? But the thing is, under no competition, obviously, under no competition. Once we have a competition, uh, things differ. So what I want to know is, I, I mean, I, what I need to specify is that, you know, once I have these final decision nodes, I'm going to call them, uh, let's call them X, Y, Z, T, W, T. All right. So what I need to specify is, and that information is perfectly enough to solve this game. What is the preference relation? I'm going to call the preference relation of the first guy as such and preference relation of the second guy as such. All right. So these are the symbols only. So how does this guy rank these uh, 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 alternatives or uh, outcomes. All right. Same here. How does player two, Mr. Green, I mean, uh, ranks those alternatives? Well, uh, depending on the scenario you're trying to investigate, uh, it, it may take any structure you like. But the thing is, let's let's specify some preference relations. So here, I'm going to assume that you know X is his first best because. Downtown, he's opening a restaurant in downtown, perfect, and there's no competition. So therefore, it comes Y, all right? And then, well, uh, Z is like DD, right? Everybody's opening up a restaurant and DD, all right? So it's a good thing, uh, but, but, but there's a competition. So I can open DR, for example. So which one is better, is T or Z? So I'm gonna assume that T is better for him uh, than, than Z, all right? And for, for here, W and T, well, 
This time D is better than, so W is better than uh, R, uh, uh, T, I'm sorry. Why is that? Well, because here, uh, the second guy, remember I'm talking about preferences of the second player. So the second guy is opening a restaurant in downtown Toronto and there's no competition. So therefore W is better than T. And so, uh, well, the question is, uh, is what, what about X, Y and W, T relationship? Well, well, I don't know, but let's, we can put it in, in uh, as such. So X, W, all right. So X is downtown, no competition. W, no uh, competition and downtown. Maybe he's indifferent between these two. I don't know. And then what else? Um, well, we have uh, obviously uh, DD here, but you know what? He actually prefers Y. All right. So Y is better than uh, what? Uh, uh, for example, uh, DR, so T, which is better than, uh, better than, um, or RR should be the worst. I'm sorry. Oh, this is T, this is T. There are too many T's. I'm sorry for this. So X, Y, Z, T, W, uh, um, S, let's call it, all right? So therefore it should be, S is the worst, all right? Because I am basically opening a restaurant in the sort of relatively worst spot and there is competition. So then S, I have, I have W here. What about T? I am opening T, but you know what? The competition is not tough. So T should be better than S, but it should be worse than, or it can be indifferent to, I don't care. Um, so I have S here, I have W here, I have T here. Uh, yeah, wh what about Z? So the thing is, uh, Z is, is a competition. So you know what? I can put Z here. All right. So <clears throat> again, it's like um, usually if it is a problem, if it is a question, I tell you, uh, you know, how those preferences are ranked. Uh, or how these outcomes are ranked. But if you're looking at a real world situation and trying to model it as a game environment, this is the relationship you need to figure out, all right? How does player one and player two rank those alternatives? That's very important. Why is so? Well, because we are later gonna assume that each decision maker is choosing an action to uh, that is going to serve himself uh, in a most profitable way, all right? Uh, technically speaking, uh, each player is gonna be choosing an action to maximize his or her preferences, all right? Again, we're gonna assume, right, uh, the preferences can be represented by a utility function. So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna call it, by the way, payoff function later. So each player is going to choose an action or strategy to maximize his or her utility, all right? Um, so you can do the same thing for player one. Um, but the thing is, alternative is obviously, and for most of our examples, instead of giving this type of ranking, we're gonna give them numbers, all right? So for example, we're gonna say, uh, I don't know, 30, um, uh, 60. So 60 refers to $60 million, all right? So it's sort of a lifelong profitability of opening a restaurant in downtown and 30 million, um, I'm just making up the numbers, is sort of the lifetime profitability of uh, investing on hedge fund. So this Y is gonna be another number, for example, uh, uh, 30, um, uh, um, 30, 30, all right? So that means Player two is because he's invested on Richmond Hill, he's gonna make less profit uh, and lifetime. And well, his profit is gonna be exactly the same uh, for uh, Mr. Brown, and so it's 30. But once again, these do not, these outcomes do not have to reflect the profits. Maybe Mr. Brown and Mr. Green are sort of, I don't know, weird guys who don't really care only about profits, they also care about uh, sort of hurting the other guy, all right? So therefore, uh, the preferences out of outcomes do not have to be profits. So game theory, the games are actually much more flexible than, uh, you know, uh, than sort of a standard treatment. But again, in our examples, just for simplification, we're gonna give some, you know, numbers there. Uh, just to sort of represent those preferences. But you change the preference, uh, the game tree is gonna be still there because the game tree doesn't depend on the preferences. 
All right, the game tree depends on the structure of the game tree, depends on the players, their actions, their informations, all right, and obviously the outcomes. So the preferences is we need preferences just to analyze the potential solution, potential outcome of this game, right? I mean, once I sort of construct this game, the next question as a modeler, I'm going to ask, well, what is the optimal strategy for Mr. Brown? Right? So what is the optimal strategy for Mr. Green under these circumstances? How should they move or play this game, this strategic interaction? So this is basically what we mean by solving a game or analyzing a game. When we solve a game, then we need preferences. But otherwise, the structure of the game tree has nothing to do with the preferences. Okay? So that's an important point. Um, so the second point I like to make is the following. So a different, again, game structure means a different thing. So for example, if I have a game tree like this, okay, versus a game tree like this, I kind of mentioned this, but I just wanted to underline. All right, so this is player one, this is player two and two, this is player one, this is player two, right? This is an info set. And actions are exactly the same, A, B, C, D, E, F, and A, B, C, D, C, D. All right, so what is, and by the way, let's put the preferences here as well. 30, 60, 60, 60, 0, 50, and then 50, 0. I just make up some numbers, all right? Uh, I mean, at this point, uh, they don't mean anything because I'm not gonna analyze these games. Um, I'm 50, 0. What I just want to say is that, you know, um, these two games, in terms of preferences, in terms of outcomes, actions, and players, are the same. However, there's a, uh, when you look at these two pictures, uh, there are two differences, right? And they're very important. The one difference is that there's this info set here. There's no info set here. And we know what that means. That means here, player two, before choosing E or F, knows observes that player one actually picked B. And so therefore he knows that, you know, he's not in, in this world. I mean, C, D out of the picture. So he's choosing either E or F. And here, same thing. He knows that his choices C or D, E, F are not available uh, options because he observes the action A of player one. Here, however, player two does not observe player one's move. So he's making his choice blindfoldedly. All right, so that's the one, the difference between these two pictures. The second difference is, um, you know, the action's name. So here it's CD, here it's EF. Why is that so? Well, I mean, it, it doesn't make other sense otherwise, right? I mean, how so? It's like, remember here I said, player two is making a decision blindfoldedly, meaning, I mean, it's not physically blindfolded, it's just he doesn't observe whether player one is choosing A or B. So therefore, when he chooses an action, all right, um, the only thing he knows is that I am choosing either one on top or one on bottom, right? So meaning he has two actions, in fact. He doesn't have four actions, all right? So, so C, D, E, F doesn't really make sense. Um, if you, if you, want to put E and F here and say, look, player two, let's suppose these guys are, these guys play this game without knowing each other, right? And then player two, so here, player, uh, player one is one game, uh, I'm sorry, player one is in one room, player two is in another room. So somebody is gonna come and say, player one, it's your time to make a move and you are the first player. In both games, this is what the information player one will receive. And then uh, the second player's room, somebody will enter. And in the first game, all right, so this is the first game, uh, this, this guy who enters the second player's room is going to inform him uh, that player one played A. Now, what would you play? So if it, it is then in this game. In this game, however, this guy who enters to the second player's room is going to inform the second player 
uh, with something like this. Player one has already made his move. So what would you pick now? All right. So the second player is going to ask, well, what did he choose? Uh, well, the informer is going to say, I can't tell you that. All right. I mean, obviously this is not going to happen, but you know, you can imagine this type of scenario. So the second player doesn't observe the first player's action. Fine. So when I say pick an action, so how many actions do I have? Do I have four actions? Two actions. Well, in fact, second player has always two actions, right? Uh, so here, these are letters, but normally, remember, the letters correspond to, uh, I don't know, jump up, D, sit down. All right, uh, I know, it's silly, but, you know, these are the actions, let's suppose. What about E and D? Same. Uh, e and F, I'm sorry. E means jump up, F means sit down. So here, in fact, when I use different lingo, all right, um, it's just, I mean, you'll see later when we do uh, 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 extensive form games in a uh, detailed fashion, we, we name these same actions with different letters whenever uh, these uh, decision nodes are not in the same info set. And the reason for this, because writing strategies is going to be easier, all right? That's completely why we do, uh, do, do that. But otherwise, these are in fact exactly the same actions, all right? So in order to underline this, we don't say EF here, we say CD, okay? Um, so that's one reason. The second reason, uh, if EF is literally a different actions, all right? So let's say E is equal to uh, turn back, and uh, uh, F is face, uh, or, I don't know, smile, all right? Something like this. So they are literally different actions, if this is the case. Well, then if I put E and F here, what am I going to tell this guy, the second guy? So the informant entered, he says, first player made his decision. Now, what do you choose? Well, the second player will ask, what did the first player choose? The informant will say, I can't tell you, right? The information doesn't allow. All right, well, then the next question the second player will ask, what are the available actions for me? So if the informant tells him that you can choose between E and F, or you can choose between C and D, remember, we do not want to model an environment where players have four actions. All right. We want to model an environment where at every single decision node, players have just two actions. So in that sense, so if, if we say, uh, if the informant tells the second player, you can choose between E and F. Well, that in fact is going to inform the second player that the first player actually picked B. So therefore, the information will be revealed. You see what I mean? So similarly, if the informant here tells the second player, you should choose between C and D, E and F are out of the picture, well, then the second player will infer, will understand if he's not, you know, stupid, uh, which we assume he, they're not. Um, so uh, he will understand that the, second, uh, the first player actually played A. For that reason, his choice is between C and D. So E and F are out of picture. So... But this is going to violate this uh, environment, uh, st uh, the informational structure of this environment. So therefore, it's very, very, very important. Maybe not for this silly example, but whenever I put an info set, uh, all the actions, all right, so I mean all the branches should be named uh, symmetrically. If this is CD, this should be CD. If this is EF, this should be EF, all right? However, if the decision nodes are separate, well, of course, I can call them C and D, right? And maybe they are literally the same actions, but we usually just put different letters, uh, uh, E and F, just to make, you know, writing down strategies easier. That's it. Um, so that's a very important uh, uh, point I wanted to make. All right?